different types of borrowing. By the end of this presentation, you should be able to identify and explain the features of different types of borrowing. You should be able to assess the advantages and drawbacks of the different types of borrowing. And you should be able to use that knowledge then to perform an evaluation of the suitability of the different types of borrowing against the user's needs. Remember, it's critically important that you can consider the user's needs against any form of borrowing. Let's start with the first type of borrowing. You may see something called an overdraft. An overdraft is a short-term form of borrowing that banks typically offer as part of a current account. Short-term borrowing in the world of business is defined as less than one year. However, realistically, an overdraft should be used for only a couple of months, as it comes with a higher rate of interest than a standard bank loan. For example, I have a bill that I need to pay for £1,000 today, and I only have £200 in my bank account at the moment until I get paid tomorrow. I can actually use £800 of my overdraft facility to make this payment. So now when I get paid my £2,000 tomorrow, £800 of that will get taken away instantly from me, plus maybe £50 for a charge of interest for using my overdraft. That's making it quite excessive. However, that shows you how the bank makes their money from lending to you in the short term. Some overdrafts, however, do come with fee-free as part of their bank account, especially premium rate customers. So actually, borrowing that £800 might actually only cost you £800. But bear in mind, it has to be paid back. It's a short-term form of finance. So what are the advantages and drawbacks of an overdraft? Well, the advantages are that it's flexible. You only borrow what you need to use at the time, and it tends to be cheaper than a bank loan if you use it in the short term. It's also fairly quick and easy to arrange if you have a bank account ready with a bank. And you normally won't be charged anything for paying off the overdraft earlier than expected. So, i.e., if you pay it back before maybe 30 days, you won't actually get charged any interest in some accounts. That does depend on the type of bank account that you've got. However, the obvious disadvantages of an overdraft are that there is usually a charge if you want to extend your overdraft, so you need to go longer than the period you agreed. You could even be charged if you go over your overdraft limit, and that could be a zero unless you've pre-arranged it and agreed it. Again, it all depends on the type of bank account that you've got. The bank can ask for the money back theoretically at any time. They can call in that debt. So you could be left with, as I think about the student account that we looked at in a previous video, you could be left with a large overdraft that suddenly starts to occur interest fees. And you can get an overdraft normally from a bank and it's got to be in a business current, sorry, a business or a personal current account. If you haven't actually got one of those accounts, then you tend to find that it's difficult to obtain an overdraft. Another form of borrowing is a personal loan. A personal loan is tended to be seen as a medium to long-term example of borrowing. And banks typically offer these to customers when they require their service. A customer typically will have to apply for a personal loan by visiting the branch. They will complete an application form and the bank will review this along with their estimated outgoing to see if they would then approve the loan. Once the loan has been approved, then the money will tend to be transferred into the customer's account. The customer will be charged interest on the money that they borrow until the loan is repaid. Now, typically, you will find that if you repay the loan quicker than required, you will be charged a fee for this, known as an early repayment fee. You may be thinking, why is this the case? Well, banks make money out of lending money to you, and they don't want it to be repaid, occurring less interest as a result. So they will charge you a fee for that loss of interest that they've had. So what are the advantages and drawbacks for a bank loan? Well, you typically have fixed interest rates, which help to create some sort of certainty and stability. You have fixed repayments that make it easier to budget and plan for your outgoings. You tend to have a low rate of interest than an overdraft or a credit card. And tends to be quick availability with minimal documentation required, so long as you bank with the organisation you're looking to take out the loan. Of course, there are drawbacks. Interest is always charged on the money that you borrow. You really haven't got an ability to repay the loan in full without facing a penalty clause or a penalty fee. And you do need to have a good credit rating to get approval. 
or you may find that you're charged more interest to take out that loan. Now another form of borrowing you may have seen is something called higher purchase. Now think of higher purchase as a form of a loan that allows you to purchase the item at the end of a specified period. For example, higher purchase typically is used in the car industry where when buying a car you may hear it talked about finance. That's a form of higher purchase. A customer will take out a finance agreement or a higher purchase agreement that will last a set time frame. Now throughout that time frame, the customer will have to make agreed repayments. And it's only until the last repayment is made that the item actually becomes theirs. So if you think about an example here with a car, if a customer has to make 36 monthly payments, then it's only after the 36th payment that the car actually becomes theirs. What they then need to do at the end of that period is obviously decide if they want to keep the car or not. Now the car actually belongs to them, but they could be offered an incentive to obviously trade up and take out another agreement, another higher purchase agreement. This is how the organisations make money. What you also have to bear in mind is with a higher purchase agreement, you will be charged more for the actual purchase of the vehicle because you're spreading the cost out. This is why it could be cheaper to buy the vehicle outright and you need to take care to consider whether a financial agreement such as a higher purchase is the ideal option to purchase that car or whether a bank loan will be cheaper in the long term. Now higher purchase has some obvious advantages. You can choose a time and the length that you actually want to pay the repayments back and even how much you want to pay linked to the deposit that you're going to put down and that can all be linked to your overall budget. The rate of interest and monthly repayments tend to be fixed and the ability to buy and remove assets over a longer period of time is a real advantage and it tends to happen with expensive assets like a car that you might want to spread the cost over a longer period of time. Of course, the drawbacks tend to be that you're tied into a contract and if you have a change in your first personal circumstances, you could face financial difficulty. You tend to pay more for the overall cost of the product than buying it outright. And some plans like PCPs, as they're now called, have what's called a balloon payment at the end. So this means that yes, your agreement over 36 months may appear to be cheaper, but then you're hit with a large lump sum at the end if you wish to buy the purchase. In the case of a car, that's why you're then offered an incentive to take out another finance agreement. And obviously they will take give you some sort of discount rather than trying to acquire the vehicle outright. And you remain indebted to that organisation. Another form of borrowing is something called a mortgage. Now a mortgage tends to be a long term loan. And that's made against a property. Now the lender still owns the title deed to the property until the mortgage is repaid in full. Until that happens, the mortgage technically still belongs and the asset of the house belongs to the lender. Now, to apply for a mortgage, you have to prove that you've got enough income to be able to meet the required payments. If it isn't the case, then the mortgage will be refused. Mortgages are very strictly regulated and lenders have to ensure that you've got the ability to meet the repayments and also factor in changes that may happen to your personal circumstances. So what are the advantages and drawbacks of a mortgage? Well, a mortgage makes home ownership more affordable as repayments are over a long period of time, up to something like 45 years you possibly get a mortgage for. You can choose either a fixed rate or you could make it a variable payment. Some people like fixed rate because it sets the amount they have to pay back. You can choose the length of time that a mortgage is for. So you could choose to have it over 20 years, for example, up to about, say, 45 years. Or you can either pick a number in between. Mortgage lenders tend to be flexible, allowing you to choose that frame that you want. And it's fairly low interest rate compared to other types of borrowing. However, bear in mind that that low interest rate is on a large high value asset. So you do pay a considerable amount back. Now the disadvantages tend to be that repayments mean that you will pay back a lot more than you will have originally borrowed. So it would have been cheaper if you could afford it to buy the house outright with cash. You typically have to now pay an arrangement fee to such a mortgage. Now this is a little bit of a bugbear for many people who used to have mortgages and they used to arrange it over 35 years and they, the mortgage kept on going and rolling over. Where well, now it's seen as a financial product which has to be renewed maybe every two to four or five years and you get charged an arrangement fee for setting that mortgage up. 
And should you face any change in your personal circumstances, then you could get into financial difficulties. But like I said before, the bank should factor this consideration in before they issue the mortgage. Now, a typical form of borrowing that we see is something called a credit card. Now, a credit card is a short-term form of borrowing. That should be treated in the same way that we view overdrafts. Credit cards come with a high rate of interest. Once you start borrowing on them, then you need to start to work out how you want to repay. If you choose to repay the balance in full, then you actually won't be charged any interest because you actually have no outstanding debt to the credit card company. However, if you do not pay the balance in full, then the balance that's remaining will start to occur interest. And this is where the credit card company makes their money. Credit cards typically have a limit on the allowed amount of spending. And that tends to be down to your credit score and the level of risk that you are deemed to have to the credit card company. So what are the advantages and drawbacks of a credit card? Well, the main advantage is that a credit card is safer than carrying cash. It also enables you to make records and keep records of what was spent and when it was spent. This can be really useful if you ever get into a dispute with a company about an item and you can't find your receipt because a credit card statement can have the same weighting when it comes to proving that you made that purchase. It also gives you increased consumer protection and that's because when you buy a credit card, as long as it's over £100, then you've got increased consumer rights because your contract is with the credit card company and not with the seller. So for example, imagine a ticket company sells you tickets for a big event like the B-Fest and then it goes bankrupt. Well, you typically would just do in the list of creditors and obviously be an unsecured creditor, so you may not get anything back. However, with the credit card company, because you pay them, they actually have to refund your money because your contract's with them, not with the people who sell the tickets. And also, you've got an ability to build a positive credit score, and that can come in handy if you're looking to take out any form of borrowing, such as maybe a mortgage or a bank loan in a later date. Of course, the disadvantages are really straightforward. You've got the ability to spend beyond your means. Just because I give you that limit doesn't mean you have to spend up to it, and you've got to make sure you manage it carefully. The interest charges on credit cards can and typically are very high if you start to borrow money. You could be hit with unexpected fees, especially if you go over your credit limit. Some lenders will not stop your spending at that credit limit rather than just choosing to charge you more money for borrowing it. And you typically have to keep swapping cards if you want to get the best rate of interest and the best credit card. And then we have the payday loan. The payday loan has been in the news and in the media quite a lot. Now, a payday loan is a short-term form of borrowing. It's actually very much like an overdraft that you tend to find that you get from a bank. However, with payday loans, they tend to be offered online and they tend to come with a really high rate of interest that's very much designed for the short-term borrowing. These loans are really quick and easy to apply for, and because they're offered by different companies, you're no longer tied just to your bank and linked to your bank account like you would be with an overdraft. You can use a payday loan really for any type of spending that the borrower chooses. And that is part of the problem. The fact that you can choose to spend that payday loan as you wish. You are making that decision. There are many questions on how ethical these types of loans are and the level of financial checks are actually put in place when people come to take out these payday loans. So what are the advantages of a payday loan? Well, the argument is that it's quick and easy to apply for and the cash instantly will arrive in your bank account. They tend to be available to anybody over the age of 18, regardless of your credit rating. And that's what differs from an overdraft. Again, it will be over the age of 18, but your credit rating may not, well, may hinder you from getting an overdraft because the bank deems you too great a risk or it's not in your needs for your personal circumstances. Whereas these payday loans will actually issue it regardless of your credit history. You tend to find that you've got increased competition. So you've got more competition taking place on the rates of interest you pay. So that could benefit you if you were to borrow the money. And it is easy to extend the life of the payday loan. 
However, you've got to consider those high interest charges if you default on any payments that you've agreed. The application process may be easy, but it could also mean that it appeals to people who've got financial difficulties or they're not very good at managing their financial needs. It could actually be difficult to obtain a payday loan if you haven't got any proof of a fixed wage or salary. So people who are self-employed actually may find it difficult to obtain a payday loan. And they tend to only lend small amounts of money. But of course, that's each payday lender. People who are not very good at managing their money may try and take out agreements with more than one. Payday loans should not be used as a way to solve debt, as typically they just increase the level of debt that people have. Thanks for checking out the Bee Business B YouTube channel. Don't forget to click the subscribe button down below to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter. It's at B Business B. Also, give the Facebook page a like. It's facebook.com forward slash B Business B. And lastly, don't forget to check out the online hiver activities found on bbusinessb.co.uk full of quizzes, activities and resources. And remember, until next time, keep buzzing.